it's scary to know that your life is in someone's hands like that and they could just do whatever they want without your consent. I would never forget it. I felt literally less than a woman. Oh my god, I, I can't even explain. Emotionally, I was like, I cried and I cried. I was like, they took part of my womanhood. I was really messed up for a while. In the summer of 2013, the Center for Investigative Reporting broke the disturbing story about the sterilization of women in California prisons, a story that prompted hearings in the state capitol. When a recent Center for Investigative Reports story broke, claiming that women in the California prison system were undergoing sterilizations, many of us were shocked and outraged. I think this is something that unites all of us to protect the civil rights of people who are not free. In the gallery was the reporter who broke the story, Corey Johnson. He found that between 2006 and 2010, 148 women were sterilized in California's prisons. The state has admitted that they have done these illegal surgeries, but we don't actually know who they did them on. What we found thus far in the reporting is that uh, there were rules in place and that um, the officials involved in recommending uh, these procedures to the women knew that the rules were in place and, and consciously decided to break the rules. How was this allowed to happen? To understand how, it's important to look at California's long history of state-sponsored sterilizations and even eugenics. If you look back, there was this doctor by the name of Leo Stanley who went into prisons and literally removed the testicles of male inmates and replaced them with testicles of men who had died but were deemed socially fit. And he had sterilized as many as 600 men in the state of California. And if you look at California as a whole, you'll notice that it was actually the worst state when it came to the eugenics program. They basically sterilized as many as 20,000 people and accounted for about one-third of sterilizations in the entire country. The Nazis modeled their eugenics program on theories developed in California. That was my initial impetus, you know, to look at sterilizations that occurred, you know, in the early 1900s. Scientists at Stanford promoted sterilization as a way to improve society and even traded papers in the 1930s with their Third Reich counterparts. And so as I'm digging to try to learn more about historical eugenics, I get this tip that perhaps there was more current day sterilizations that had taken place and that, that these sterilizations may have occurred in the prisons. In the 1970s, sterilizations were prohibited at all state institutions unless they were medically necessary. Finally, in 1995, even clearer regulations were put in place to close this chapter in California's history. But Corey began investigating suspect sterilizations that occurred as recently as 2010. So I reached out and I cast my net really wide and I took trips all across the state. Um, but for, for a lot of people, uh, talking about whether they were sterilized is a very tough thing to do. It's a lot of shame that's around it. There's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of pain. Corey interviewed several women for his report. These are extracts from what they told him, read out by actors. He said, so we're going to be doing this tubal ligation, right? I'm like, tubal ligation? What are you talking about? I don't want any procedure. I just want to have my baby. I went into a straight panic. I figured that's just what happens in prison, that that's the best kind of doctor you're going to get. He never told me nothing about nothing. 
one of his nurses asked me, how many kids do you have? She said, seven. Like she was just so appalled. I felt humiliated and insulted, you know? I made a mistake and I'm here, but I love my kids being treated like I was less than human. It produced in me a, a despair. This is the drawer for the destruction of reproductive capacity. Justice Now, a legal aid organization in Oakland, began documenting cases of prison sterilization several years ago. And we started to receive reports from people about having gone in for um, di different kinds of reproductive care or um, surgeries and coming out without their ovaries, coming out without their uterus. The allegations they gathered from former inmates are shocking, but difficult to verify. This is what the women told Justice Now, again read by actors. He had a camera inside of me. He says he has to do this to give me a hysterectomy. I said, I don't want a hysterectomy. He said, how old are you? I said, I'm 44. He said, well, you're too old to have any more children, so it doesn't really matter. I finally got sent to Madera Hospital to get a tonsillectomy. And I met five women from Valley State Women's Prison getting hysterectomies within a 24-hour period. There's a joke going around that Madera is selling women's uteruses. I went to the library and I picked up a few things on hysterectomies. And when I read the pamphlet, it had nothing to do with why I had my hysterectomy. When I went back to my paperwork, it said, Prolapsed uterus. He never told me anything about that. So I wonder if that's what he had to write to get the hysterectomy approved. So when I heard stories like these, naturally, you know, I tried to check them out. Corey analyzed records of the most common methods of sterilization carried out in California's prisons over the last 14 years. He found a system riddled with questionable procedures and noticed that in 2006, the sterilization spiked. That was when Dr. James Heinrich became the chief OBGYN at Valley State Prison. My name is Crystal Nguyen. I spent five and a half years at Valley State Prison for Women. Crystal was serving time for her part in an armed robbery committed by her boyfriend. At 19, Crystal found herself pregnant and behind bars. Dr. Heinrich was the main GYN doctor there at the time when I first got there. When I first saw him, he looked like, oh, he, you know, he looks like a nice guy. But when I would ask him questions about my pregnancy, he would laugh at it and make me feel stupid. So then I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable with him after, after that. And it, it was weird because he would examine, um, when he, he would, he would be eating popcorn all the time popcorn, cheese, and crackers. And he would be examining while he would be eating. And that's, to me, that's not, it's not hygienic. It's, you know, it just, it's, it was gross. So it just, it just creeped me out. Crystal was under Dr. Heinrich's care during her pregnancy. Her baby was taken away less than three days after she gave birth. They came and they got him. I felt like I was really alone now. She was then assigned a job in the prison's infirmary which meant working under Dr. Heinrich, where she witnessed firsthand how he persuaded women to be sterilized. Well, sometimes there's someone out there that maybe needed a pee cup or needed something, because I'd have to wait behind the screen until, you know, a nurse came over or came out or poked out, or I would say, excuse me, you know, when they were finished talking, like, I need something, and they would, you know, come. So I would hear, you know, I, I heard Dr. Heinrich talking about, well, maybe, you know, you should do something so you can't have any more kids, because if, if that's how your life is and you don't have any support, that's how I know for a fact that people weren't just saying it, it's, it's true. Crystal wasn't surprised that women felt they had been coerced by their doctor. Inside of prison, once you're in there, it's, it's as if you're treated as an animal, as that you have no rights. No one's going to care because basically you've been to prison. So they feel like that you're, you're less than and that you, you, know, you don't deserve to have kids. You, you committed a crime, you're in prison, you're doing your time. And they're thinking that, yeah, we're doing society a favor by not letting you reproduce. We were told Dr. Heinrich was too ill to speak to us for this film. In an earlier interview, he denied pressuring anyone and said the money spent to perform these operations in prison was small compared to what you save in welfare, paying for these unwanted children as they procreate more. 
In 2006, the same year Heinrich was hired, federal courts found that medical care in California prisons violated the constitutional ban on cruel and unusual punishment. The courts set up what they call a federal receiver's office. Its job is to oversee the medical care for all the inmates in California. They're responsible for enforcing the ban on sterilizations. However, according to a 2008 document from the receiver's office itself, they knew sterilizations were continuing. Justice now says this raises serious concerns about whether the receiver's office was doing its job. We received the documentation of tubal ligations being performed between 2006 and 2010, directly from the federal receiver's office. And 50 of those happened between 2008 and 2010. The California Department of Corrections told us that any questions about sterilizations must be directed to the receiver's office. I feel like everyone keeps passing the buck. No one wants to answer any questions. So we're going to talk to this woman named Joyce Hayho. She's the spokesperson for the receiver's office. I want to know why the receiver's office didn't investigate this until 2010 when there was evidence indicating that they knew what was going on as early as 2008. First of all, I just want to mention that, number one, under the regulations, a tubal ligation shouldn't be performed. But what we can see from going back and looking at the cases that were being performed is that inmates were um, asked um, as part of a service being provided to them whether or not they wanted to have a tubal ligation. And if so, it appears that the inmates were being provided with um, in, an informed consent form and talked to with regard to the procedure that uh, was being offered to them. So have you spoken to the doctors about any of this? Are they being investigated? And will there be any consequences for their role in these tubal ligations? With all of the information that we've provided to our doctors and all of the patient education with our patient uh, education with our doctors. A doctor now performing a tubal ligation in our system would be very egregious and absolutely would be something that would be a dismissible offense. We have no information at this time that any procedure was ever forced on a female. Were these procedures inappropriate? Absolutely. But were they forced? Um, every indication we have is that this has not happened. But where's the line? I mean, there were two. When I gave Joyce specific examples of women like who women did feel coerced, 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 she wouldn't talk about them, claiming patient privacy. So we are having the audit to specifically look into these cases. So I can't specifically talk about each individual case due to HIPAA regulations, but we know that the audit will delve into each procedure to determine what happened and why. The audit is still ongoing, and the findings will be due out early next year, according to the State House. What we do is we'll At Justice Now, there's concern that the entire issue may be brushed under the rug. We spoke to Joyce Hayhoe uh, from the receiver's office. She basically said that they are now putting certain regulations in place to prevent this type of intimidation behind bars. Yeah, that's that's interesting that she says that. And again, it's it's really hard. I mean, I'm not saying Joyce Heho is a liar. She doesn't know what she's talking about. But you have to remember, she was not working there during those years. People are still being coerced mm -hmm. because we're, we're throwaways. We're cast out of society. We were locked away from society. So we're basically society's trash in a lot of their eyes. So it's easy for them to just treat us as such. Misty Rojo knows this firsthand. She served nearly nine years for attempted murder at Valley State Women's Prison. She says at the heart of the sterilization issue is informed consent. When prison doctors ask you to sign a form, it's not as cut and dry as it may seem to those who have never been locked up. So for them to say, we feel like you should do this, you feel more or less compelled to comply because that's what you're taught in there. You comply with the rules so you can get out. So if you can imagine that type of structure to be asked to sign off your right to have children, it's still not informed. It's not very consensual. It doesn't feel safe. It doesn't feel comfortable. The hearings last August in California were a first step in state efforts to uncover what really happened with these sterilizations behind bars. They had representatives from the federal 
court, the receiver's office show up. It was a packed room. There was a lot of emotion in the room. When you're in prison, you do what you're told to do to get out, period. So even in the idea of medical care, if a doctor tells you you should do this, you're automatically inclined to feel like you should do it simply because of the environment you're in. And you're likely to sign a paper without fully understanding the lifelong ramifications, especially if they hand you a paper, you sign it, that's it. Some people may be happy with that decision, but at the end of the day, it is not informed consent. It is coercive. Thank you. But in terms of detailed answers into why this practice had been going on uh, in violation of the rules, possibly going all the way back from the early 90s, we didn't get any closer to getting any answers in that hearing at all. What I guess what I'm trying to say is we had a regulation in place and for some reason that regulation was not followed. And so we had some conflicting um, information going out to the people um, within the department. And we think that that's an important part of the story. Shortly after the hearings, we obtained this letter showing that the California Medical Board is investigating the now retired Dr. Heinrich. It's scary to know that your life is in someone's hands like that. You're, um, and they could just do whatever they want without your consent. They could do it and get away with it without any repercussions or anything going on. And that it took this long for it to be exposed. The ultimate dream would be for them to pass a bill to further clarify laws so that they know no one can do this ever. I would love for the doctors um, to have to take responsibility for the surgeries that they did do. Um, and I would like for the people whom this happened to, to know that this was not supposed to happen to them.